When it comes to 3D printing miniatures, one of the most important aspects of getting a model off the build plate is supporting it correctly. And it's more of an art form than it is a technique, though there are steps you can go through to understand how this works, a lot of it tends to be trial and error. Well, we're going to cut all of that out and just use auto supports, and I'm going to show you the best way to use them that works every time for me and gets me detailed models without any of the details corrupted or affected by the support markings, and it's going to work every single time. So go through this process with me and you should be able to get workable prints in no time at all. And if you're new here, hello, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. Like with all my videos, I just want to get straight into it. So step one, download Light Cheese Slicer. And yes, you might slice with a different application. That's absolutely fine. I'm not going to ask you to change that. I actually frequently slice with a different application because unfortunately, Light Cheese tends to cause more unexpected issues than any other slicer. But when it comes to actually supporting your models, no other program has a better workflow than Light Cheese. The next step is really simple. You want to set up your printer in the slicer itself. And this is really simple to do. Just add another 3D printer, choose the printer you have, but make sure you don't need to set all of your exposure settings, but make sure that your chosen layer height that you're gonna be printed at is set because this helps later on when we actually go and try and detect islands. And for those unaware, islands are the floating bits of geometry that end up unsupported and sticking to the vat then all you need to do is bring your model into the slicer program. In this situation, my model is too small for the scale I want, so I'm gonna increase it to 200% so that it matches my 32 millimeter miniatures. The next thing you want to do is orient the miniature. Now, a lot of people tend to say you want it 35 degrees backwards, 45 degrees backwards. Honestly, I tend to find anywhere between 30 and 45 degrees is absolutely fine. Really what we're trying to do here is make sure that there are no large flat surfaces parallel to the build plate. For anybody unaware, that may sound daft because obviously you've got a flat surface on the build plate, so any flat surface on the model should be parallel. But when we're supporting things, they're not actually sticking straight to the build plate, you've just got a load of posts sticking up in the air. So on your first layer of flat curing, anything between those posts will bend and flex, and that's why you end up with a really wobbly and bendy offset flat surface underneath your model. So try and keep any flat surfaces at an angle to the build plate. Here I'm just going to pick 30 degrees and that's it. Now it's ready to support. That's the model oriented on your build plate. Now there is an aside here for anybody printing larger models you might find that they've not been pre-hollowed and you want to hollow them. Now in order to do that because I'm not slicing in this same application I actually need to use another application to do the hollowing before I even bring it into Lychee in the first place. So if you're in this scenario, what you need to do, or at least what I do, is download Chitubox, load the model in Chitubox, scale it to the size I want, but not rotate it, and then hollow the model from there. Make sure you put drain holes in it, ideally in a location that you can't see and as large as possible. And where you can, I like to try and put two drain holes in so at least then I can flush the cleaning liquids through the model as opposed to just trying to cram it in one hole and then coming out of the same place. Once you've got a hollowed model, you can then export it as an STL into the same folder where the original was, just don't override it and give it a new name. Then with that hollowed model, you can just drag that into Lychee and go back to step one that we started at the beginning of the video, bringing us back to an oriented model or a hollowed and oriented model. For miniatures, thankfully the auto supports in Lychee are already set to the perfect sizes for what I need. And again, for miniatures, I'm only going to use medium and light supports. If you've got a larger model, you might want to employ heavy supports, but I do this manually and the next stage. So right now, just go over to prepare, choose auto, choose medium, and then click generate automatic supports. It's also worth noting here that I've left the density set to high. Then what I'm going to do is look around the model. So anywhere where the, the point of this support is going to touch detail and get rid of detail, we're going to get rid of that. Forgive the beep, I have not uh, been paying attention to uh, having my sound on. So um, anywhere like here, so for example, that ring there on the bolter, 
uh, on this rifle, sorry, uh, there's me doing some Warhammer speak, that ring there on the rifle is going to be obscured by the shape of that and it's going to leave horrible marks. So we're going to get rid of that. The roundness here sticks out. And what we're going to do instead is click back on so it would have gotten rid of all of that detail. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to still support the weight of that component and put it on a flat or more rounded surface underneath. And if I can fit one there, I'll do one there as well just for safety. So I'm going to go around the model doing this, deleting any of the supports that I don't need or sorry, not that I don't need that will obscure detail. So things like on the end of there, on the end of there, anything where it's not already on a flat surface, we're going to get rid of. So that looks okay on flat surfaces there. We're going to get rid of it on there. All of these need to go. I can probably put a couple of them back in in a second, but I'll do that. I'm, I'm pretty much redoing what I've just undone, but I want one there and one there on the flat surfaces only. Uh, don't really want one on his back. Don't want one under here. Don't want one on there because that'll get rid of armor detail. All these ones underneath are just nasty and horrible and they will just cause problems, obscure detail. So that's done most of it. To be honest, like I say, this potentially, depending on how you look at it, could be a waste of time. But what I find also supports does is it it essentially puts supports in the areas where we're going to be considering the weight of the model and things like that. So um, it gives me an indication initially as to where I want supported. So things like this elbow here, I'm going to put one on there and I'm going to put one on here under the flat area. Don't worry about the feet too much, but there is some detail actually. He's lifting his foot up, so we'll get rid of them. We don't need all this. Just crazy. Too many supports. I've probably gone a bit heavy, but this is just the way I find fast to do it. I select. Right, so one there, one there on the flat area. Get rid of that one on the back. Kind of drops here on the heel, so if I can squeeze one in there, then that's fine. Uh, all that is going to obscure detail. So I think initially we're good, and then I'm just going to build some back up. So anywhere that's going to be underneath like here, I'll pop one there maybe there and this is more just to take the weight of the model i'm not going to see any of this so however many are on there i don't care i could add more if i wanted to uh, right let's have a look under the arm so if i can support underneath there again these when you look at the model straight on most of those if not all of those will be hidden just by the shape of the model himself so that's fairly standard so we've got everywhere covered all these major overhangs like that arm that arm the weapon uh, the foot uh, both feet are supported we only need only need a couple of supports on there maybe i'll put an extra one in here uh in fact let's just support underneath the buttocks there and that's all good so that's the model mostly supported so the next thing i'm going to do really important is click off the model because if i leave it clicked on when i do the next button press it will actually ruin it so now i'm going to choose light supports and then i'm going to go into island detector then i'm going to select the model again and it's left me on light if i'd have done it the other way i'm not going to do it because it's a nightmare to undo um but if i'd left the model selected then click light it would have changed all of these to light supports which we don't want so click off the model select light go to island detector we want detail because this is what we can get the highest level in the free version you can do realistic and that will actually simulate the build uh, but you need to pay for the pro version for that which i've never done we want to do this quick easy and free so i'm going to search for islands and that's giving me a load of red marks under here and all i'm going to do here using the light supports which honestly on this scale you are not going to see if you pull them off is click supports to all areas so it couldn't do eight of the islands uh, but it's done all the rest of them for us and i'm not even going to change that that is what it is if i can get into some of these areas like things like that it's saying there's an island there am i going to notice that detail on a 32 millimeter model no i mean i could add a light support in but that's going to make it worse with the damage it causes than anything else and i've just deleted all of them so let me do that again and select there we go so it's done all of them so i'm not bothered about that one i'm not bothered about this because i'm not going to see it um anywhere else possibly the chin and that helmet could lose some detail but as it prints i mean it's a slight sticky out area i'm not going to use it i think under the chin's quite important i don't like where that one's gone i think that's a heavy isn't it so we will get under here 
and just click around until hopefully, there we go, it gives us one of them mini ones. I think you can do that manually somehow, but I've never figured out how to do it. And again, this is just a quick and easy approach. And then we're going to try and, no, not that, undo. I want one of those, there you go, one of those really thin ones there. And actually, you can see that's obscuring the detail. Um, I'm going to assume uh, on the air of confidence here that actually we're only going to lose because this is connected to the rest of the model. At most, we will lose a sliver on that bottom side. So that's most of it done. So we've auto supported it, got a little bit heavy on the on the island detection, but that's all of the underhangs supported. So next, what I'm going to do is click manual and then I'm going to click bracings and that's going to brace all those all those different supports so that they don't fall just don't fall away and get wobbly and cause issues. So that's going to strengthen everything. And there we go. So time to go and stick it through the printer and see what we get. So we'll export that now and go get it printed. So there you go, guys. How did that work for you? As I said, it works for me every time. Yeah, it's not the best way to support models, but it's quick, it's efficient, it's easy, and it works. Personally, I've gotten rather lazy, and unless models are not only pre-supported, but they're also well-supported, I rarely even bother to print them anymore, no matter how good they are. So if you're a creator out there, make sure you're actually supporting your models and supporting them well, because that goes a long way to getting your buyers really, really shouting about them and telling other people how great they are. Was this video useful to you in any way? Do you have any other tips or tricks to speed up this process or make it more efficient or perhaps something I've missed that we could be doing here? Let me know down in the comments. I also want to say thanks to you for watching and if you did like the video, please let me know. Just hit that like button, but you can also consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Thanks also to our patrons who you can see on the screen now. And if you want to get your name up in the credits by supporting us, the links are down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support i'm really glad to be doing these videos for you and truly hope they help you out even if they are just a few quick tips and easy cheat ways on how to get more prints off your 3d printer thanks i'll see you guys next time until then fohammer out